everybody. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, one of my markers, actually, something a little bit different, the Tipman 98 Custom. I'm going to do this in two parts. The first part is going to be just a general overview or kind of review of the marker, and then the second part is where I'm going to talk specifically about my Tipman 98 Custom. Let me first give the general look at the Tipman 98 Custom. So the Tipman Model 98 Custom is an inline blowback paintball marker. What that means is that the valve is actually in the middle here with the hammer behind the bolt in front. When the hammer strikes the valve, it opens the valve, a little bit of air goes backwards to reset the hammer. The rest of the air actually goes through a couple channels around the valve body and then out the bolt to propel the paintball. It's a very simple system and properly maintained. It is an extremely reliable system. I've had this marker since 2004 and I still use it at least a few times a year. Works great. Out of the box, the stock marker is a little bit rough. The stock barrel is about eight inches long it's a very large bore and it's a very rough bore, so you're not going to get great consistency out of it, even if you have really good paint. It also has a row of porting about halfway down it, so you only get about four inches worth of barrel where the air is actually accelerating the paintball. Once you hit that row of porting, obviously the air is venting out of the porting and the paintball is no longer accelerating. Because of this, it actually takes a little bit more air than usual to get the paintball up to 280 feet per second. Another factor that causes the stock 98 to be a little bit inefficient is the method of velocity adjustment. This is the velocity adjuster right here on the side of the marker. Now normally blowback markers have a rear velocity adjuster. The Tipman 98 out of the box, the end cap doesn't have a velocity adjuster. Instead you adjust it by kind of a brute force method using this screw to physically block airflow out of the power tube. So regardless of where this is adjusted, you're using the same amount of air every shot. Combining the side velocity adjuster with the row of porting halfway down the stock barrel means out of the box you get a relatively inefficient paintball marker. I'll talk later about how that can be remedied. Another issue with the marker out of the box is, well as you can see it's powder coated. Okay, you can actually see where it's wearing away a bit right there. But the powder coat get, uh, has quite a bit of overspray on the inside of the receivers. I should mention now that the body of the gun is uh, clamshell design of cast aluminum receivers. They're cast aluminum rather than milled, so they're not really the highest machining quality to begin with. And then combine that with overspray from the powder coat on the inside, and you get the action is very rough, and that can contribute to inefficiency. Despite those shortcomings out of the box, this gun is super, super customizable, upgradable, and moddable to the point where you can basically take a stock 98 and tweak it in any one of probably hundreds of different ways to make it exactly the way you want it, as I've done here. So Tipman offers a number of drop-in kits that are really cool for these markers. You can get things like electronic triggers, you can get the response trigger, which goes on this side, it's a little attachment, it comes out of the valve here. You can put a cyclone hopper on here. Tipman used to offer, I don't know if they still do, but they used to offer what they called the e-bolt kit, which was a kit to convert this to electro-pneumatic operation. And they offered the low pressure kit, which I have installed here, which brings the operating pressure down from about 800 PSI down to about 400 PSI. And each of these different kits and things have their pros and cons, but they do tweak the performance in certain ways, and they're helpful depending on what you want to get out of the marker. You also have things like replacement triggers, you can get double finger triggers, you can get blade triggers. Those work really well, of course, with the E-trigger or the E-bolt kits. And there's also aftermarket internals. You can replace all the springs, there's a bolt, the new Tipman 98s, not this one because this one's pretty old, but the newer ones have an anti-chop bolt system which is really cool. You can get aftermarket hammers, you can add rear velocity adjusters, uh, lots of different options there as far as upgrades that you can purchase for these markers. And there are also a number of mods you can do that don't necessarily cost anything. For instance, a very popular set of mods for the Tipman 98 involves tweaking the trigger. So you can change the springs in the trigger you can, to make them lighter, you can silence the springs in the trigger. What some people have even done is put little magnets in there instead of return springs. A very popular mod involves polishing the internals to smooth up the action. And of course you can change the spring. The valve spring is a little difficult to access, but the main drive spring, you can get like a Madman spring kit, put in a heavier spring or a lighter spring, depending on how you want the marker to operate. Another cool feature here is the feed neck. You have the front sight, that actually is a button that holds the feed neck in place. So if you break a ball in the barrel, it's really easy to drop the feed neck down, run a squeegee through, put the feed neck back on without having to remove your barrel. 
The downside to this is it can make the feed neck a little rickety. And you can see I actually have a little bit of tape here. People put tape or O-rings around the feed neck to get rid of that. They call it hopper wobble. But a small problem for a pretty interesting solution to the problem of cleaning out your barrel if you need to do so. Also, I should mention the price used. These things are dirt cheap. You're talking $50, if not less, for a stock one in, you know, this kind of condition used. Uh, even a nice one used is going to maybe fetch $100, and new, I don't think they're much more than $100. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with this marker. The big picture is that it's a little bit rough out of the box, and in order to really achieve its optimal performance, it could use a little bit of work. But it's really easy to improve. There's lots of drop-in upgrades, there's lots of modifications that you can do without buying anything that are really going to improve the performance of this marker. And finally, as I mentioned early on, this is an extremely reliable design. Aside from having to do routine maintenance, cleaning, and replacing some parts that might wear out, this gun has an extremely long lifetime, and for that reason alone is a great value. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for part two, in which I will talk specifically about what I've done to this 98 Custom. See you soon.